Hey y'all, it's old dad here. Uh, now that baseball season's over, I wanted to make a little bit longer video. Normally mine are short and funny and usually a little bit self-deprecating, but I want to talk about baseball for a minute. Um, I love the sport. I played it for a long time. I never was very good at it, but I, I was a bench rider. I don't mind to say that. I, for whatever reason, just never had a coach and didn't have a dad that could teach me to hit a baseball. I couldn't hit a baseball for nothing. Um, I was good as a catcher, but I was always a backup because I never learned to hit a baseball. Nobody ever taught me how to do it, and I couldn't figure it out on my own. So there it was. But I love the sport. And I played uh, from the time that Little League first started out till I graduated high school. And I love the sport, always have. I don't like watching it so much, but I, I love watching youth. I, watch, I love watching the kids play, and that's, that's why I film it. Uh, and, and love the game. But I just want to talk a little bit about maybe uh, our experience a little bit, and then also if your family is considering getting into travel ball, a little bit about that, and maybe somebody can benefit from me rambling on. Uh, so my son has been playing for the best part of five years. Uh, he started when he was about, little, about four, I think, yeah, 2019. He started when he was four. He's now nine. I'm um, looking here at some notes I got on the computer up here. He's had uh, four different owners, 19 different coaches, not including me. He's played for six different teams. And because I'm a numbers nerd, he's been to 97 baseball practices and he has played in 115 games. And that's been in 8U – 9U and 10U. He's played both rec and travel ball. Um, so I've seen a little bit about how both two different organizations, well, different organizations, but both rec and travel ball work. Um, I've seen kids play in rec ball that, that I would think should be playing travel ball. And I've seen a fair number of kids playing travel ball that ought to be playing rec ball. Uh, rec ball is a whole different commitment uh, from the parents, both in time, well, there went my lighting, which was my computer monitors. <laughs> That's how poor we are around here. We, there we go. We use the computer monitors to generate light. Uh, travel ball is a whole different commitment in terms of money and time. Uh, not only in fees that you pay, but gas and everything else. I mean, when you've got a game that's going to be an hour and a half from your house, and you got to be at the ball field at 7.30 in the morning uh, on a Saturday and then again on a Sunday possibly, that's a commitment. I mean, that's you got to get up and be ready and go and and all that. Um, and, and then if you have siblings that aren't playing, you got to find something to do with them or you're going to pay to get them in. Um, rec ball is, is a little bit easier, uh, but a lot of the kids want the competition of travel ball, and unfortunately – that, that's where you're going to see the better competition these days. It's it's not like I was when back in the early 70s and early 80s and all that, or late late 70s and 80s. Um, so there, there's a big difference between rec and travel ball. Uh, but before I talk a little bit more about travel ball, whether you're deciding whether that's right for you, if you got a kid that's starting out and you want to start out with travel ball or you want to start out with rec ball like we did and then make the move to travel ball, that's great. But if you're at that point where your kid's been playing rec ball and, and uh, you're thinking about moving to travel ball, I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But the first thing I want to talk about in terms of just in general to all baseball parents is umpires. Um, I hear people complaining and bitching and moaning all the time about calls and this, that, and the other. And, and people that know me, they know I film the games and, and I've been filming games for several years now. And I see a lot and I hear a lot. Um, a lot of people will complain that the umpires don't know the rules, this, that, and the other. And maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. I mean, these are not MLB or even college uh, umpires. Some of them have umpired in college and, and high school, but these guys are coming out here and taking their weekends. And yeah, they get paid. Uh, but, but they might not be, you know, high school level or even college level, whatever baseball, these are, these are kids baseball umpires and they're getting paid a minimum, minimal amount, a small amount 
to come out and do this on their time. Should they know the rules if they're going to umpire? Yes. And the rules for, I've heard, I've heard people say, well, I can't find the rules. Like, I want to go and research these rules. Well, the sanctioning body that we play under is uh, UTRIP, as everybody calls it. And their rules are right there on their website. You can easily go download them, print them off on a PDF, carry them in the back of your car, have them in your pocket, whatever you want. If you want to argue the rules, you can argue the rules. However, most of the time, the arguments I see from parents getting upset are not about rules. They're about calls. And calls are judgment calls. It's a judgment. Just like if you were out there on the field, and just like your judgment when you holler it from the benches or from the bleachers or whether you're standing on the fence line. Everybody saw the play. Everybody made a judgment. But you're not the one on the field the umpire is, and it's his or her call. Now, if the coach, if, it, if the field umpire makes a call and the coach wants to appeal it, he's going to appeal it to the home plate umpire. They may or may not agree with the field umpire, and the call is made. Why even get upset about it? They make the call. Move on. Hopefully, if you've got a decent umpire, or if they suck, at least they suck consistently across both teams. I don't think there's any... And, and if there are, I don't think there's many of these umpires out there, especially in our area, as many teams that are local and play all over in the upstate. And these guys are not traveling far. They're, they're playing and they're, they're umping in their backyard. They're not going to be around long if they don't halfway do a decent job or if they're not consistent. And I, from what I've seen, they, they pretty much are. So as far as I'm concerned, the conversation with umpires – if it's not a rules call, if it's a judgment call, it stands. What's on the field stands, move on. You might not be happy with it. Don't bitch and complain. Move on. There's no sense in it. It's kids' baseball. It's youth sports. It's such a bad example for your kids to be out there hollering. And I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I've, I've seen it for the last four or five years. And it's not like it's rampant. But understand that umpires – are going to be wrong. They're going to make judgment calls. And by the rules, you cannot argue a judgment call. So there it is. Enough on that. A little bit about uh, you're the family that is thinking about rec ball. Or excuse me, thinking of your play, maybe you're playing rec ball and you're thinking about travel ball. As I said earlier, it is a commitment both in time and money. Um depending on what team you're with or what organization you're with, it might be the commitment is more about money than time or time than money. It just depends. Um, the, the, the thing to do is to find an organization that fits what you're looking for. Um, you can play travel ball for not a whole lot of money and, and be on a team that wins and, and that does well. Um, you can be on a team that maybe doesn't win a whole lot, but is very interested in the development of your child as a player. That's important too. Uh, and then if you have the means and, and it happens to be what you want, you can go and pay through the nose for because there are both volunteer and paid coaches. Um, and so if you get one of these teams maybe out of some of the bigger – bigger cities or whatever in the area uh, and they've got paid coaches, you're going to pay for that. And you should expect the results that you should get from that. Um, and so there's all different levels, even in travel ball. Um, so that's one thing to consider. What is your level of commitment in both time and your ability to afford whatever it is that you want for your child? Um, some teams travel all over the place. They go all over the place. Some teams travel locally. Most of the ones that we've looked at here locally uh, in the upstate, they, they travel within about an hour, and that fits us. Some parents are willing to drive to Florida. I mean, you might go you know, once a year or something to, or like down to the beach or something to make a special trip. But most of us, you know, that we the organization we like or what fits my wife and I for our family is within an hour, hour and a half. And we, we like that. Um, you want to find a team that an organization, and it really kind of starts from the top. I'm talking to parents who've never played travel ball. Uh, you've got to find an owner that is that, that has the, um, the, the vision for the organization. 
their job is going to be uh, trying to recruit coaches, uh, you know, trying to market what is their goal, what are their goals for the organization. Uh, they obviously want to recruit the best players and the best coaches and all that. So for, as a, from an owner standpoint, you're looking at uh, trying to promote a professional organization. Uh, you're handling the business side of things, all the money, the insurance, the liability, all that stuff. You're taking all that risk on. Uh, you you want to look at the organization at that level. Then you're going to look at your coaches. What are your coaches doing for the kids? Are they, are, are they mostly concerned about winning? Are they more concerned about the development of your child? Because really, all you can care about is your child. It's great. It's a team sport. And yes, you want to be on a team and everybody likes to win. But really, when it comes down to it, you're paying for your child to play a game. And so you've got to find coaches that are going to best serve your child to what you see fit. Uh, and for us, we like to win. Winning's fun. Uh, but we also want uh, coaches that care about our children, uh, coaches that are going to develop our children at this age. We're in, currently in 9U. Um, we care about an organization that is based in faith. Uh, if you come to one of our games, one of the first things you'll see before every game is we kneel and we pray. And that's important to my family. It might not be to yours, and that's okay. You got to think about that in the organization. Uh, one big thing you got to think about, and 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 anybody that's still watching this that's been in travel ball is parents. Um, you got to think a lot about the parents. That's hard. That's a hard one because you can't go research parents really. Uh, you can research owners and organizations. You know the organizational level, and you know the coaches. You can get to kind of you know that this that and the other, but. Until you have been to practices and you've played some games and this, that, and the other, and you've watched parents, um, you know, and, but I guess those of us who have been in local travel ball for a while, we all get a reputation. I know I got one, you know, whatever. I don't care. Uh, I'm probably one of the more antisocial people out there. I'm out there with my camera and there it is. Uh, but you do need to think about parents, <laughs> Um, that can make or break your experience. Your child is out on the field with their coach. You could have the best organization, best coaches, uh, and whether or not you can suck it up with those parents that make your life miserable is up to you. That, but but that's a part of it. So, um, I guess the last thing I want to talk about is a little bit still about on travel ball. Um, we have had a great experience. We've enjoyed it a lot, um, and and you can make it what you want. Uh, there are some things I'm going to tell you to, that you need to have, you need to plan on, maybe that some parents don't think about. Uh, you you got to think about, well, first thing you got to have, you, I tell you what I would do, to go to one of these local tournaments there on Saturdays and Sundays. We just finished the fall season, so you won't see any more tournaments around here until spring. Um, if you have the opportunity, though, whenever you happen to be watching this video, go to a tournament. You know, spend the 10 bucks and go out there, sit in the bleachers, pick a team. It doesn't matter. You know, a lot of these uh, tournaments, they'll have four or five, six games going on at a time. Walk around, sit and watch an inning at each game, something. Watch what the parents are, you know, whatever. Watch what they have. Watch what they bring. They bring a wagon, right? Everybody's got a wagon. First thing you're going to notice from the time you get out of your car to you get to your bleacher seat or whatever, it's a little bit of a walk at most of these parks. Uh, you're going to want a wagon. You're going to want a little buddy heater. You're going to want a little fan, maybe, you know, uh, different things like you're going to want a cooler. You're going to want sunscreen, all these different things. And you can, you know, you can maybe find all that stuff online or whatever, or talk to parents. But uh, so there's a, there's a, I guess my point is there is a dollar investment uh, in supplies and equipment that make life tolerable when you get to a ball field at 7.30 in the morning and you're there until 7.30 at night because sometimes that happens. So uh, it's it's not it's not for everybody. Um, some people are going to be happy with rec ball. Uh, maybe the parents are happier with rec ball than the child and the parents make that decision. And sometimes maybe parents sacrifice uh, their own happiness to play travel ball because that's what makes their kid happy or they think that's what's best for their kid. Uh, so we all make our own decisions. That's the point being – uh, for us, it's been a good experience. I think for my son, it's been a good experience. And uh, it's taken us a little bit. I, I would not disparage any of the coaches. Cole has had great coaches the whole time. What did I say? 19 coaches. 
Um, and that's not only head coaches, that's all the assistant coaches and everybody else. He's had great coaches. All coaches are different. Um, I don't think that I would say that Cole has had a bad coach at all. Um, we have, um, we've had coaches. I would say I would have done it differently or whatever. That's the way it is. Uh, right now with the organization we are right now, we've been very happy. We've been with them one season. We like our organization. We like our coaches. Uh, and so we are going to continue with this organization as long as Cole can pull his weight on the field and make the team. And that's what it's about. So I don't know if this video has helped anybody. I don't know if anybody's still watching. If you are, you know, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me ramble on. And maybe it'll help you just a little bit. This is Old Dad. Y'all be good out there. Take care of one another. We'll see you on the ball field sometime soon.